everybody, we're going to get started. If everybody can gather. Okay, good morning, everyone. Okay, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunshine Week. We actually have a sun today, not just a figurative one, a literal one. Um, my name is Rachel Foss. I'm the Senior Policy Advisor for reInvent Albany. We advocate for transparent, accountable New York government and work to strengthen the freedom of information law and put government information online. We put out a report just last week called Listening to FOIL that looked at six agencies' FOIL performance. But here we are as a, as a group of transparency advocates who want to make sure that FOIL is strong and can best serve New Yorkers. And Sunshine Week is a nonpartisan, nationwide initiative uniting participants from civic groups, government, and journalism to emphasize the critical role of public record access and transparent government in maintaining a healthy democracy. But first, I want to read the preamble to the New, York, New York's own Freedom of Information Law, which I think says it all. A free society is maintained when government is responsive and responsible to the public, when the public is aware of governmental actions. The more open a government is with its citizenry, the greater the understanding and participation of the public in government. As state and local government becomes more increased, uh, services increase and public problems become more sophisticated and complex, it is incumbent upon the state and its localities to extend public accountability wherever and whenever feasible. And we're excited to be joined by leaders in the Senate and Assembly who are working to do just that, to make sure that our state's core transparency laws are continually strengthened and work best for all New Yorkers. So welcome and thank you. We have Senator Liu, we have Assemblymember Raga, and we're going to be joined very shortly by Senator Hoyle and Siegel, who are, both, who are all champions of FOIL reform bills in the legislature that we're here to talk about today. We also have a number of transparency advocates that are here today behind me from a large swath of issue areas. We have watchdog groups, civil rights groups, environmental groups. So welcome to the New York Coalition for Open Government, Surveillance Technology Oversight Project, New York Public Interest Research Group, the New York League of Women Voters, Legal Aid Society, Common Cause New York, uh, and the New York Civil Liberties Union. But it's not just the groups here today that are advocates for strengthening FOIL. Just yesterday, we sent a letter with nearly with actually more than 30 groups asking the governor and legislature to fix FOIL. And it focuses on four important bills that we're going to talk about today. So let's talk about the solutions. I'm going to kick it off to Senator Liu, who's going to talk about his bill that will improve the process for how attorney's fees are awarded. That's when a member of the public is requesting records and has to go to court for them. So Senator Liu. Thank you, Rachel. I'm so happy to be part of this coalition that really speaks to democracy itself. I think Rachel already outlined the preamble to the freedom of information law. First and foremost, freedom of information. Whose information? Not my information. Not information that is owned by the government. It's information that belongs in the hands of people. And when people have information, that is the only way that we can have a truly democratic society, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Lots of slogans here, and maybe sometimes these slogans become cliche, but I think we all take heart at what the meaning of these slogans or these phrases were from the get-go, and what sometimes people in government have to be reminded of. My bill makes it easier for people in the public to request information from state government, government agencies. Sometimes, Pursuing those freedom of information requests are not only time consuming, but expensive. And sometimes they, of, they often require the help and work of attorneys. So my bill lowers the bar so that it'll be much easier for somebody in the public asking for this information to recoup their attorney fees if they are successful in getting that information. It's the right thing to do. We should make it easier not more difficult for people to get information from government agencies. And you know, at the end of the day, today is a beautiful day because we have lots of sunshine outside, 
We even have sunshine inside the state capitol, literally. And I think I'm probably taking one of Brad Hoylman Siegel's lines, because he's always coming up with the best lines, but what is the best disinfectant? Oh, sunshine. Sunshine. Sunshine is the best disinfectant. We want to make sure sunshine prevails all throughout state government, including right here in the state capitol. Thank you. All right, and um, so thank you, Senator Lear, so much. Um, next, we're going to have Senator Brad Hoyman Siegel speak. He has two of the bills that are in the uh, list of bills we'd like to see the legislature take up. Um, so, Senator, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Liu. Uh, thank you uh, to all the advocates in uh, reInvent uh, Albany. I'm State Senator Brad Hoyman Siegel. Represent the west side of Manhattan from Christopher Street up to West 103. Can we just point out this gentleman's bright yellow <laughs> suit? Mr. Sunshine. Mr. Sunshine. Man. Uh, that, I don't know where you found that, but I want one on order. Um, uh, you know, we know that how important the freedom of information law is to make sure that New Yorkers can understand what their government is doing, but also to keep us, to keep Senator Liu and me and our colleagues accountable to the public. So I'm very grateful to everyone here and wanted to thank you for including my two bills, uh, one that will require government agencies to report information about the FOIL inquiries they receive and their responses. Um, we know currently, uh, according to the Committee on Open Government, that 39% of counties and a staggering 73% of election boards failed to acknowledge FOIL requests made to them. 73% failed to acknowledge for requests made to them within the five business days as required by law. And 28% of those counties never responded at all, assembly member. So I know you share that outrage. So uh, our legislation would require agencies to report that information so we can see the data. You cannot manage what you don't measure. And this is an important uh, step in the right direction. The other bill that I carry would require that entities with exclusions reapply for their FOIL exclusion every three years. If they don't, their exclusion would be considered expired and their documents can be released if a FOIL request is made without the state needing to go through a burdensome process. So these two bills, along with the bills proposed by my colleagues to cap time agencies, uh, the time agencies have to respond to FOIL requests and make it easier for those submitting requests to be reimbursed for legal fees, will increase transparency, accountability, and trust in government, as well as expand the sunlight throughout these deep, dark corridors of Albany. Thank you so much for coming up. Let's get this done. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Now we're going to have Assembly Member Raga speak to um, his bill on FOIL timing. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, our senators, the advocates here, and, and all our colleagues that are uh, here in full support uh, here in Sunshine Week to make sure government here in Albany and throughout the state is, is held more accountable, has more transparency, and is more easily accessible to all the people uh, of New York. Uh, my bill, the FOIL Timeline Act, is going to uh, make it quicker, have capped the, the, the number of days or the maximum of days uh, government agencies can deny a request um, and, and address it. Uh, right now, there's, there's a process in which uh, you'll have some agencies not fund or, or uh, prioritize some of the requests and it just gets uh, pushed and pushed back and pushed back and uh, constructively denied uh, th uh, currently. So uh, this way, uh, there's going to be a timeline set. Uh, they know they have to respond by this by this uh, set date, and this way, uh, we know all our our, our residents in New York uh, can expect a, a reasonable response in a reasonable amount of time uh, from our agencies. This is needed. It's been needed for a while. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to co-sponsor this uh, along with Senator uh, Scoofus uh, in the Senate. Uh, and I'm looking to work with all our colleagues in government to make sure this uh, this passes uh, for all New Yorkers. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to support. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Assemblymember. Now we're going to hear from more of the advocates who are here today from all across the state. I'm going to um, welcome Paul Wolf from the New York Coalition for Open Government, who did some of those great reports that Senator Roman Siegel cited. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. As Rachel said, my name is Paul Wolf. I serve as president of the New York Coalition for Open Government. And I'm here to talk a little bit more about Senator Liu's bill and why that's important. In New York State, unlike many other states, there are no penalties for violating the FOIL law or the Open Meetings law. There's no government agency that monitors compliance with those laws. There's no enforcement of those laws other than citizens filing a lawsuit which is a pretty big burden to put on the public. But that's the way it works in New York State. So the only way the public can hold government officials accountable is to hire an attorney and file a lawsuit. And that's not easy. It's hard to find attorneys to take these cases, and they cost a considerable amount of money. So the importance of Senator Liu's bill is if you file a lawsuit and win, you should get your attorney fees. It's pretty simple. But in New York, it's very hard to get attorney fees. If you win, which is hard enough, but if you win, you have to jump through two hoops before you can get attorney fees. One is you have to substantially prevail, which means you have to really win. Winning alone isn't enough. You have to substantially prevail. And no one really knows what that means. And when you win your case, and if the court awards you attorney fees, what happens is, an appeal is filed saying you did not substantially prevail. So now you have to spend more money in attorney fees to get attorney fees. Uh, it's really a crazy system. Other states don't require substantially prevail. Senator's Lou bill, Senator Lou's bill deletes one word, substantially, in front of prevail. It will make a huge difference in getting attorney fees. The other hoop is, you have to show that the agency did not have a reasonable basis for denying your FOIL request. You don't have to do that in most, most other states. If you go to court, a judge agrees, you proved your case, you should get attorney fees. That's not what happens. That's what needs to happen. This bill, which passed the Senate in the last session, we hope will pass again and hope pass the Assembly this time. So it's a very important piece of legislation, and we uh, applaud Senator Liu for uh, introducing it and for the Senate for passing it last session and look forward to it becoming law. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to have David Sifford um, from Stop Come Up. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm David Sifford. I'm the legal director of the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project. Um, it's really wonderful to be in this coalition of all different kinds of organizations. You've got watchdog organizations, people dedicating their lives to ensuring open and accountable government. You have you know, press organ free press organizations who have de dedicated their lives to getting information out to the public. We are a civil rights organization standing with a lot of other civil rights organizations because we rely on the freedom of information law to get a lot of the information we need in order to do the advocacy work that we need to do. And what happens when we file a freedom of information request? Let's say we find out that it seems like a police department somewhere is using a piece of surveillance technology that no one really knows anything about. We want to learn about it. We want to learn what they're doing. So we file a freedom of information request. The first thing that happens is we get a letter saying, wait a few months. So we wait a few months, and then we get another letter that says, wait a few more months. This often goes on and on. Six months is usually the minimum it takes before we get any information. It can take well over a year before we get any information. And by then, um, New Yorkers have been surveilled. And they've had data compromised. They've had their private lives, ex lives exposed. People have been actively harmed over this whole period. And we don't even know what's happening. And so that's just one example from our organization of the harms of the Freedom of Information Law not being on a strict timeline, which is why we're so excited that Assemblyman Baraga and Senator Skoufis have introduced the FOIL timeline bill, because it gives agencies a firm deadline of you know, 30 days if you're going to reject a request and 60 days to produce documents. After that time, uh, if you haven't produced the documents, if you haven't given a response, it's deemed denied. You can take your appeal, which is on a strict timeline. You can then go to court, which is also on a, on a timeline. So this opens up the process 
and ends the sort of endless delays that come from the current statute's lack of a timeline in the, in the initial ste step. We think this will make a huge difference in terms of New Yorkers accessing information from government in an actual, real, and practical way. And so once again, we're so grateful to everyone for being here, and especially Assemblymember Raga and Senator Scoopis for introducing this bill. Okay, next we have, thank you, uh, Blair Horner from Nyberg. I love the balloon. Yes. Uh, Senator Horman Segal has a great balloon over here to symbolize uh, Sunshine Week. Um, happy Sunshine Week. Put it behind your head. <laughs> <laughs> which, which head is bigger? Um, uh, the uh, Happy Sunshine Week, uh, it's a, this is an important week because it's really about uh, our democracy. We live in a representative democracy where the voters give their informed consent to the representative to solve policy problems that plague society. And how can you give informed consent if you can't get the information? New York has great language in its law about the public's right to access information, but it doesn't have the uh, policies in place to make it easy to get it. And so essentially, uh, we live in a dark capital. Uh, so we support these uh, measures, among others, to open up state government. We applaud the uh, senators and assembly members for these package of bills, and we hope that next Sunshine Week, uh, we'll be celebrating the passage of at least some of these bills into law. Thank you. Um, next, we have Erica Smitka from the League of Women Voters. Thank you, Rachel, uh, and thank you so much to all the members who are here with us today pushing these bills. As Rachel said, my name is Erica Smitka. I'm Deputy Director of the League of Women Voters of New York State. Uh, the current design of our FOIL system is backwards and unworkable. There's a lack of transparency and clarity in a process that's meant to provide just that. FOIL laws are a method for citizens in a just democracy to be able to hold their government accountable. The way our laws are set up now, it enables not only government agencies, but corporations and businesses to skirt the system and utilize loopholes to avoid providing access to information that should be accessible. These reforms must be enacted to improve transparency and to allow voters to have a clear view of the data they're entitled to. Thank you so much. All right, now we have um, one last speaker from the Legal Aid Society. I'm Shane Farrell, and I'm a public defender at the Legal Aid Society. I've been interested in the freedom of information laws since I was in law school. In an, in an effort to learn more about it in law school, I filed a request with the New York City Mayor's Office for some documents about bike lanes and Vision Zero. Um, about every six months, I get an update from the Mayor's Office saying that they'll get back to me soon. It's been five years, and I still... <laughs> We have a different mayor, and I still haven't heard, I, I don't have much hope that I'm ever gonna get those documents. New Yorkers deserve more from their government. These bills would fundamentally shift the work that we do at the Legal Aid Society on behalf of tens of thousands of New Yorkers. As public defenders, it's the job of the Legal Aid Society to hold the government to account in court. However, our ability to seek justice on behalf of our clients, whether it be in criminal, civil, housing, immigration, or family court requires a basic level of transparency by the various agencies that serve the public. Through FOIL, we obtain information vital to representing our clients, like state and local law enforcement policies and procedures, information for our LILU database regarding officer misconduct, New York City and New York City Housing Authority violation information. Too many agencies play games with the definition of a reasonable amount of time to respond to FOIL requests. They deny requests by dragging out responding, like the mayor's office has done to me. And they hide information behind indefinite commercial FOIL exemptions. It's time to shine a light on the common practice of FOIL avoidance and pass these bills to ensure government agencies are actually able to be held accountable by the constituents of this state. Thank you. So thank you all. Um, we have sent the press release to the members here, but there are four bills. We would like to see four bills passed by both the Senate and the Assembly and signed by the governor. Pa past FOIL week, sometimes we've had different bills in each house, but we've got a huge group of transparency advocates behind this. More than 30 groups sent a letter to the governor and the legislative leaders asking for their support of the FOIL Timeline Act, the FOIL Reporting Act, 
limiting the Commercial Foil Exemption Act, and lastly, the Foil Attorney's Fee Bill. And we thank all the advocates and the legislators for being here today, and we can answer any questions that members of the press have. Let me say that lack of information or foil being foiled, like in the literal sense, the stalling, the denials, the stonewalling, that's taken place for a long time, far too long. So I wouldn't pin it just on this administration. It's been going on for far too long, and we're trying to put a stop to it. Thank you. And let me also say, I, I appreciate the governor and even tip, you know, putting her toe in the water of, of uh, FOIL because it is a vexing issue for government entities. As you heard, uh, it's at every level of government, not just the state. But it's up to us as legislators to pass laws to strengthen FOIL and increase transparency. So we have to work in partnership to do that. She's offered us the opportunity, and I think we're taking her up on it. I think that's what these bills do. They set up tighter mechanisms, shorter timeline, or more clearly defined, mostly shorter timelines, and also the awarding of attorney fees. That that is that becomes less of a disincentive for public, including the news media, to pursue that information and more of an incentive for the agencies to provide the information on a timely basis. And I, I would just add that, you know, I think we don't even understand the scope of the problem. I and mean, we heard from Shane from the Legal Aid Society about the five-year FOIL request, but we don't even have the data to show exactly how broken FOIL is. And I think that's why Senator Holman Siegel's bill on FOIL reporting is so important, because then you can actually, if you know how many FOIL requests every agency in the state government receives, then you can properly staff it. And so we need to get to square one on FOIL and even understand the scope of the problem. And then, you know, so I think these bills work really nicely together and that you can make sure attorney's fees help keep the agencies accountable. And then the reporting bill ensures that we can staff the agencies appropriately and really treat it like the public service it should be. So I think this package works well together on addressing different problems with FOIL. Do we have any other questions? One more thing uh, to address this question, which is, um, I think there actually is a bill out there, I forget who carries it, that says if you delay more than a relatively short amount of time on a FOIL request, it's a crime. And that's not what we're trying to do here, <laughs> right? Um, the advantage of the FOIL timeline bill, uh, which I think is really important, is that there won't be this endless five-year delay because after 60 days, it's considered denied and you, can just go on a, and you can just go on appeal into agency and then you can go on another appeal to the courts relatively quickly. And so a lot of the manipulative games hopefully will be cut off at the pass and you don't need to like throw someone in jail, I don't know, whatever, whatever penalty, you know what I mean? And I think we hope though, that the attorney's fees at that point will be sufficient deterrence. So putting on someone on a swift enough timeline that people can get to court expediently and then have the ability to recover your fees once you're there that one-two combination we're hopeful will be enough. And whatever, to the extent that it's not, we'll learn what else we need. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Can we get